Hello, it's Sunday morning, November the 15th, 2020. I'm Pastor Mike Custer, the pastor of Bible Baptist Church in Grand Forks, North Dakota, and I'm glad to be able to share some thoughts with you from God's Word this morning. We've been talking about the Kingdom of Heaven parables in Matthew chapter 13, and we're going to read about another one of them in this portion of Scripture, Matthew chapter 13, beginning in verse 24, where Jesus said another, the Bible says another parable put forth he, as Christ, unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, there appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? Whence then hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root out up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. And this portion of scripture is about the wheat and the tares, obviously. And Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is like this. Those who profess to be, among those who, are, who profess to be saved, there are some who are genuine and there are some who are artificial plants, if you will. Those who have infiltrated the ranks and they seem like they're saved people but they're really not and Christ explained this in the context of wheat and tares using these things as an illustration of course wheat is good for food and a commodity but tares are noxious weeds and they may appear to be the real thing the the good item initially but in time they prove themselves to be false and worthless. And that's the way it is in many churches, in a lot of uh, Christian life experiences, where there are people who seem like they're saved. I think it's a blessing whenever someone responds to a gospel message and says, I've known for a long time that I wasn't really saved. I was just going through the motions and the Spirit of God brings that to their understanding. There are some people, I think, who are legitimately deceived, but others who are intentionally deceiving others. They know the truth. They know the reality about their own condition, but they just don't want anybody else to know. They imagine they can hide it, and so they cover it up. And the worst thing that could happen in their life is for them to imagine that it's more important for them to keep up their facade than it is to actually be right with the Lord. Jesus asked the question in Mark eight thirty six, what will it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? And so we understand from that question that the soul is more valuable than anything in this world, certainly more valuable than what other people think or maintaining one's reputation if it's not warranted, if it's not actually real, the best thing we could ever do is to admit to ourselves that we're not really saved if we know for sure that we're not, and to do something about that. Don't be one of those who just tries to convince others that you're really a child of God, but it's all an uphill battle and you know in your heart that it's not really true. Deal with it, be honest with yourself, and seek the assistance that you need, someone who can point you to Jesus Christ in salvation and do something about it while you have the opportunity. You'll be forever and eternally grateful and thankful that you did. God bless you today.